Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is David and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a quiz multiple choice app inside of React.js. Before we start programming, let me show you what the final product looks like. After you finish, you're going to see your final results with the number you got correct and also a percentage score. Below this video, you will find the GitHub link as well as the resources that you need for this project. All right, now that you know what we're going to be creating, let's get started. First thing that you want to do is open up a terminal and navigate to your desktop. Then we can create a new React app using MPX creates React app followed by the app name. Now we can CD into that directory and then start up our project. NPM run start. There's the default project. Now let's stop this for a second and open it up in VS Code. And then we can start up our server again. First thing that we're going to do is delete everything that we don't need. So we'll start up top at public and delete a couple of icons. And delete these right here. We can also get rid of the comments to clean this up. Change the title to multiple choice quiz. And that's going to change up there. Now we don't need this readme. Don't need the test file. Don't need report web vitals. Set up test or the logo. Go into app.css and delete everything below dot app. And remove report web vitals. Go into app.js and delete everything inside of the div. Don't need this logo. All right, inside of the main div, let's create our sections. The first section is going to be our header. Next is going to be the current score. Third section is going to be our question card. So in our header, we'll just have an H1 tag. For current score, we can use an H2 tag. And for now, we'll just hard code all these values. So let's say it's two. And then we're going to create another div right here. So do class name equals question dash card. Inside of the question card, we're going to have our current question and also our list of possible answers. So we have question one out of five. What is the capital of the US? And then here we're going to have an unordered list with list items inside and we're going to have our possible options here so let's say boston new york washington dc and let's say denver now all we need to do is style this up a little and make it look better so go into app.css and we're going to get question card background color is going to be gray padding of 16 to give it a little more space. Width is going to be 80% of the screen and height is just going to be auto. Then we'll say margin zero auto. We'll then have a border radius of 16 pixels. The font text is going to be white. So we'll say color equals white. And then you can just copy this box shadow from the GitHub link. Then we get this unordered list and we'll say list style is none to get rid of those bulletin points. And then for each of these list items, we're going to have, let's first set the background color to dark gray. Padding is going to be 16, give it more space. Border, three pixels, solid white. Border radius, 20 pixels. Font size, let's say 20 pixels as well. And then we'll give space in between by using margin top of eight pixels. So now we have something like this. And let's do one more thing. Let's add a class name to the current question and say question dash text. And we'll just make this a little bigger and also change the color to blue. So color is going to be dark blue and font size is going to be 24 pixels. Great, now while we're here, let's also create our fourth element, which is going to be the final results card. We'll have another div down here 
class name is going to be final results. Let's start styling this up before we edit this. Dot final results. Copy what we have from question card and we're just going to change a couple of things. The width is going to be 50% and everything else should be fine. Inside of final results, we'll have an H1, final results. We have H2, one out of five correct. And then we'll have a percentage score here. Let's say that's going to be 20%. And then we're going to have a button down here. that's going to say restart game. And we can also style up this button. And you can just copy and paste the styling for the button. We'll actually move this button to the outside of this H2 tag. So it's down there. We hard coded everything inside of this app. Now the next thing that we need to do is make it so it's dynamic and also add the logic to the game. The next thing we need to do is hide this final results card. Import react from react. And we also need the use state hook. Up top, we're going to have a property section. We'll have show final results. And set final results. Initially, this is going to be false because we don't want to show the final results. Right here, we're going to have a ternary operator. Get some curly braces and say show final results. If this is true, we're going to display the final results. And if it's false, we're going to display all the question cards. The question cards, if it's false. And final results, if we need to display that. And let's do a quick reformat using prettier. And we can test this out by manually changing this to true. So as you can see, we can go between the two, the questions and the cards. All right, next thing that we need is to get the score and also have a set score function. Initially, this is going to be zero. And let's say the current score is equal to curly braces score. So right now it's zero, but we can change this up here like that. And then we also need current question and set current question. The first question is going to be zero because we're going to be accessing this through an array. Inside of the question card for question one, here we'll say curly braces current question plus one out of questions dot length. And it's now we need to create this questions array. Now go to the GitHub page, go to source, go to app.js, and you can copy all of these questions. Copy this, and then we'll paste this right here under properties. Essentially what we have is an array of custom objects. Each of these is one object. We're going to have a text, which is going to be the question, and then we're going to have an array of options. And for each option, we're going to have an is correct value to see if that particular answer is correct. So like the capital of America is Washington DC. So that's why this right here is correct. So we can close this down and it shows you that right there. We're going to now fill in all of the possible options dynamically. Questions at the array of current question. We'll get all of the options and then we'll say dots map, get each option and we're going to return some list item. So we'll say li, and here this is going to be the current option that we grab, dot text. As you can see that changed dynamically, so if we go up here and change this to let's say like Miami, the second option changes as well. If you open this up in the console, you're going to see a warning saying that each child in the list should have a unique key property. So what we need to do is inside of this list item for all of these options, we'll say key is equal to option dot ID. And then we refresh and that goes away. So let's play around with the current question. Let's say we have the second one, third one, fourth, and the fifth one. And if we go to six, that's gonna be out of the array. Oh, one thing I also forgot, we need to replace this current question. So we'll say questions at the current question, and then we'll say dot text. And that should change the text right here. 
and now what we need to do is add an on-click listener to all of these list items. So when we click on this right here, it's going to call a different function. So we'll say on-click is equal to option clicked with option dot is correct. We're going to pass in if that current option that they clicked on is correct or not. And we have to create this function up here. Let's make another section called helper functions is correct. Let's first see if we're passing in the correct answer for each one. So we'll print out is correct and open up the console and see what's going on there. So everything should be false besides Washington DC. And there we go. We're passing in the correct result. All right, what we're going to do now is say if is correct, we'll set score to the current score plus one. Set current question to the current question plus one. This will move us to the next question in the array. Let's try this out. And this is going to be the correct answer, John Adams. And as you can see, the current score is updating. We now have a problem. Once we're at the last question, we're still setting current question to five, but we only have four. So what we have to do now is do an if check. Say, if this current question that we're on plus one is less than questions out length, we will set the question to the next one. Otherwise, we're going to show the final results. So we'll say set final results to true. And let's see that work. And there we go. Here's our final results. That's it for this function. So we can close this up now. If you click on restart game, nothing happens. So let's take care of this score out of questions dot length is correct. And then we'll also get this percentage braces parentheses times 100. Inside of here, we'll say score divided by questions dot length. And then we multiply that by 100 to get the percentage. Two out of five correct, that's 40%. Now inside of this button, we're going to have an on click. And we'll just call a function called restart game. And we don't have to pass anything in there. Const restart game. And what we have to do now is set the score back to zero. Set current question back to zero. And we also have to hide these final results. So we'll say set final results back to false. And now if we click on restart game, everything should restart. That's it for a restart game. We can also close this. Let's now try out our final game and see if everything is working. What is the capital of America? Washington, DC, 1787. Second president was John Adams, largest state, Alaska. We'll say wrong answer, Mexico. And here we go, four out of five correct, 80%. And now we can click restart game and be brought back to zero. If you wanna see each step in detail with proper commits and commit messages, please go to my GitHub repo, click on commits, and then you can look at all of these commits here. If you find any mistakes, please create a pull request and I will take a look at that. All right, that's going to wrap up this tutorial. Now, what are some improvements we can make here? I've made a list of three types of improvements that could be made to this application. We have easy, medium, and hard. You can make visual updates such as animations, adding sounds, different font styling, changing the background, all those colors. You can store the list of questions in a separate file and import this into app.js. You can also just change the questions in general, you know. For medium improvements, we can scramble up the order of questions randomly so that the user has a hard time figuring out the order of questions. After clicking one of the options, we can pause for two seconds, show if they were correct, and then move on to the next one. At the end, we can show a list of all of the wrong questions with the correct answers. For a hard challenge, you can create a live leaderboard of all of these users using like a backend such as like Firebase or AWS. If you guys can do that, I'll be really impressed. All right, thank you for watching this YouTube video. If you like this type of content, be sure to like and subscribe. I'll be posting more videos in the future. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.